Here comes the sun. You see, the entire plan of salvation is involved with the sanctuary. And when Jesus finishes his work in the second apartment, then he's coming for those who have confessed him as their Lord and Savior. But the interesting thing is that we do not know when our name is coming up for the judgment. That's the reason the Bible says in Revelation 3.3, 3, If therefore thou shall not watch out, come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Well, this is what the coming of Jesus as a thief is all about. It has to do with Christ investigating us in the investigative judgment. It's not speaking of the rapture. A thief comes unexpectedly, by surprise, without notice. He doesn't give advance notice. That's why when the judgment began in the year 1844, the Lord admonished us to watch, to be in a ready position, because we would not know when the heavenly tribunal would come to our name. We would not know the time the Son of Man would come to see if we had on a wedding garment. In Mark 13, 33 and 37, Jesus says this, Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Least coming suddenly, he find you sleeping, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. When the work of the investigative judgment closes on the final day of judgment, on the day of the Lord, the destiny of all will have been decided for life or for death. Probation closes just a short time after this on the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And then great destruction comes upon our planet as Christ and his angels prepare to come in power and great glory to our planet. But on the day of the Lord, that great and dreadful day of the Lord, the Lord will utter the following words found and recorded in Revelation 22, beginning with verse 11. Revelation 22:11 says this, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Turn to Matthew 24, 37. And notice that the coming of Jesus there is not his second coming, but his coming to investigate our names as a thief in the investigative judgment. Matthew 24, 37 says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now the coming of Jesus here is compared to the days of Noah. Look at verse 38. Whereas in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see, just before Jesus returns to earth, the righteous and the wicked will still be living on earth. Men will be planting, and building, eating, drinking, all unconscious that the final irrevocable decision has been pronounced in the heavenly sanctuary above. Before the flood, after Noah entered the ark, God shut him in, and he shut the wicked out. But for a period of seven days, according to Genesis 7 verse 4, the people, not knowing that their eternal destiny was fixed, continued in their careless, pleasure-loving ways and they mock the warnings of judgment. So, says the Lord Jesus, shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Silently, unnoticed as the midnight thief, will come the decisive hour 
which marks the fixing of everyone's destiny and the final withdrawal of mercy to guilty man. Friends, in our day, we're not in darkness that that day shall overtake us as a thief. We are all the children of the day, not of the night. And the Lord has revealed to us vital information here in this study and in the, the study of the sanctuary which will help us be ready when probation closes. The day of the Lord when great and dreadful destruction comes is very near. And the message to Sardis says, be ready, be ready, be ready. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 9, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Let us, be, let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, for helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to raft, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question here. Are the wicked there drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah enters the ark? Now who is taken away here? The Bible says, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Who is taken away? Why, it's those people who are eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. They, they're all doing all these things and they did not get inside the ark. And so the Bible says that they were taken away or destroyed. We're speaking of the wicked here. A parallel passage in Luke 17:27 confirms for us that taken away means destroyed. Look at Luke 17:27. They did eat, they drank, they married. Wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Matthew 24:39 says, And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. It's the same. Destroyed them all, took them away. So to be taken away means to be destroyed. Let's read the rest of the story in Matthew 24. Look at verse 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken. Now remember who was taken away? It was the wicked who were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, and the other left. Now let me ask you, who was left on this earth after all the waters came and the floods came and destroyed everybody. Why? It was no one his family. They were left here on this earth. Matthew twenty four forty one says, Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, that's destroyed, and the other left, like Noah. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. One is taken, the other left. One is marked for destruction, the other is sealed for eternity. Now who is the one that is taken? Why, it's the wicked. Who is the one that's left here? It's Noah and his family. The wicked are taken and the righteous are left. The wicked don't know when the flood was coming. And when it came, they were unprepared. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be.